now I'll talk about Mina. Mina is originally from Egypt, but he moved with his family to Jordan, where he got his bachelor's degree in civil engineering. In January 2008, he came to the U.S. and started uh, working at ASU, and he got his master's in 2009. His research interests include pavement materials design, fatigue endurance limits, characterization and thermal properties, advanced laboratory testing, field performance evaluations, maintenance and rehabilitation techniques, pavement management systems, cement treated bases, statistical analysis, modeling, neural network techniques, and computer applications in civil engineering. So, without further ado, here's me. I've been here for almost four years now. I came December 22nd, 2007. So it's been a great journey. I know some faces here that I I took classes with you or I taught you some classes as well. So my presentation today is going to be uh, regarding my PhD work that I started uh, almost two, two years and a half. And it's going to be talking about the integrated, integrated predictive model for uh, healing and fatigue endurance limit for sustainable asphalt concrete. I know it's kind of long, but I'm going to try to explain each term by itself. So if you look at it, uh, I need to explain what is fatigue, what is endurance limit, and what do I mean by healing, and why I'm saying it's for sustainable uh, asphalt concrete. So my uh, the outline for this presentation, I'm going to start with uh, a little bit of introduction to define some terms that might not be familiar for some of you, and then uh, my objective for uh, my PhD work, literature review, what I have did, uh, again, this is a, a main part of any research to know what others did previously, and then I'm going to sh show you how did I uh, complete or build up my statistical experimental design, and also some of the specimen, how did I um, made my specimens, and what is the testing uh, machine that I use. Also, uh, the main part of this presentation of my work will be how to develop the endurance limit uh, procedure and uh, also a proposed mini study which is still going on till now and hopefully I'm going to finish it uh, by January. So, fatigue is the first word that I want to talk about. Fatigue cracking is one of the, mo uh, one of the most um, famous um, primary, dam primary damage in any structures. Here I'm not talking about pavements, it's in any structures. It happens everywhere. Um, basically, it's the result of any cyclic loading which uh, that happens below the ultimate tensile stress. So if you remember the materials class, we always have the stress strain um, graph. In this uh, cracking, well, I'm not reaching the ultimate stress of the material. I'm keeping it, I'm applying very small stress, but it's because it's cyclic, it's keep the it's cyclic and it's keep continuing. I'm applying the same stress over and over. So basically the material will get fatigued or will get tired by time and it's gonna fail um, at a stress level much lower than the normal strength of the material. So fatigue can happen in, in metals and this is how the, the, the whole concept of fatigue happened or started from with metals. So you might wonder after using your bike for three, four years, it just breaks, and you might wonder what happened. It's just because of fatigue. By time, I keep using it and using it, and just break all of a sudden. It might happen also to any um, gear tooth failure or crankshaft. It just break, and that's also because of cyclic loading. You keep up, uh, you keep using it till it fails. I don't know if uh, some of you might know this has happened in um, uh, Hawaii, a lot of flight, 1988. Uh, the, as you can see, the upper part of the plane was damaged. And the um, report, when it came out, they say this is because of uh, fatigue cracking too. That's, uh, that's what caused uh, the failure. So now shifting gears, now we know what is fatigue. I'm going to talk about uh, more about the uh, hot mix asphalt fatigue crack. So to give you a little bit of uh, background for the pavements, which is the road that you always drive on, there, is, there are three main uh, cracking that we are interested to characterize or understand. Uh, th these, are, these are the three ones, the rutting, 
which is the, the formation of the of the street itself beneath the wheel path of the cars, or the fatigue, or the thermal cracking because of the change, the, uh, the temperature change between day daytime and nighttime. And uh, obviously, I'm going to talk more about fatigue in this presentation. So, hot mix asphalt. Um, um, it, it has also, or uh, it, yeah, we have uh, fatigue cracking happens for hot mix asphalt. Basically, it's an interconnected uh, cracks uh, happen by fatigue failure for uh, hot mix asphalt and the repeated load. Again, as you, as you recall, I said fatigue cracking happens because of cyclic loading, and in our case, for pavement, it's a traffic loading. So what happens is uh, the crack is shaped from the bottom of the layer and prove, uh, and start propagate all the way to the surface till we see. Some uh, other countries, especially South America, we, they call it crocodile cracking or alligator cracking. It's just basically the way it is. When it gets really bad, these cracks will connect to each other and will be forming many side sharp and angle pieces. And that's why they call it alligator cracking. So examples for, for the hot mix asphalt the fatigue cracking, as I said, for the pavement section, any pavement section that we drive on, we mainly have four different layers. The first layer is the hot mix asphalt, and then base, sub-base, and then the soil. And what happens uh, in terms of fatigue, the cracks start from the bottom of the hot mix asphalt and go all the way up to the surface. And as you can see, it can get, uh, uh, fatigue cracking can vary from low severity all the way to very uh, high severity. Most of the cases, when we get to fatigue, we have there is no uh, not um, enough re um, maintenance that we can do. Basically, we remove the whole layer and then uh, have a new layer. That's why most of the researchers are really interested to study fatigue because if we are solving this problem, it's going to save us a lot of money. So now moving to another concept, which is the the endurance limit. Endurance limit, this is again, this is the main um, uh, subject of this presentation. Basically, it's the flexural strain <laughs> below which there is no damage accumulated for the pavement uh, structure. So, <coughs> what I'm trying to say, this is a strain or the amount of deformation. If this amount of deformation is less than a certain amount, there is no failure due to fatigue crack. Several researchers, this concept has been there for about 30, 40 years, and as a rule of thumb, they said endurance limit, which is EL, is equal to 70 microstrains. But when I started this research, I believe that the endurance limit should change by changing mixture properties, or climate, or uh, traffic. I can't say that endurance limit for the pavements in Phoenix is going to be the same as in the one in LA. Uh, it's, it was kind of hard for me, and that's what drove uh, me to do this research. The, uh, the main objective was to carry out a um, huge laboratory experiment to identify exactly what are the mixture and pavement layer properties uh, that I need to uh, implement in my predictive model. Because basically what I want to do is to come up with certain features or certain parameters that I think is going to affect the endurance limit and afterwards to come up with uh, an integrated predictive model to predict for me where is the endurance limit for uh, flexible pavement. And as a secondary objective, also I want to compare the endurance limit from my part compared to the, uh, another PhD student, Walid Ziada, who is doing uh, the uniaxial test. So it, it's going to be interesting to see what is the endurance limit from two perspectives. So. Um, Going to the some literature review and what others did uh, related to my work, uh, so many uh, models has been done uh, to try to characterize the fatigue. The main uh, the main four models that uh, they are out there is the Shell International model, or the UC Berkeley model, or the Asphalt Institute model, or ours ASU model, which is the MAPDG, which has which has been done here. Um, about 2002 it started. So the main uh, idea for fatigue cracking is we need to we need to know how many cycles how many cycles to uh, do we need to apply till it fails till the pavement fails because it's cyclic loading. 
So, which is the NF. This NF is number of cycles per period. So people uh, try to predict the number of cycles per failure by knowing the deformation, which is epsilon or the strain, and E, the capital E is the modulus or the strength of the material itself. K1, K2, K3 are parameters, uh, specific parameters that you can come up with yours depending on each pavement that you are analyzing. What's interesting here is AF. This is called the um, field adjustment factor. And this is, uh, again, one of the uh, important uh, pieces here in this equation that we, in all the uh, previous studies that we do, the lab specimens or the, uh, the uh, testing in the lab tend to underestimate the peak performance in the, in, the, uh, in the field. So what happens is, let's say this model, based on my lab testing, it says this, uh, this um, mixture is going to fail after 1,000 cycles or 1,000 cars passing. When I go to the field, it doesn't, it doesn't it take more, or let's say 10,000 cycles, or even sometimes 100,000 cycles. So after all, doing all that type of testing, we need a big adjustment factor that ranges from, let's say, 50 to 200 sometimes. So the question was, we really are missing something for, uh, in terms of simulating what's going on in the field. And that, uh, the, the main uh, um, answer for this is we are ignoring, or we used to ignore, the effect of healing. So what do I mean by healing is basically, well, when we do our test in the, in the lab, basically what we do, we are doing a cyclic test. So let's say I have a sample, which is a beam, and then I bend it uh, downward, bring it back to the neutral axis, and then uh, push it upward, bring it back to the neutral axis. But it's a continuous. So if you compare it to the field, the field, it's, it's, you tend to see a car passing by, and then there is some rest period, rest time between each car and the other car. So what does that will do is there, is there will be some healing. Well, when I say healing is, the pavement that we drive on, it's two components. The aggregate, which is the rocks, or the tar, which is the binder, the black uh, substance. So the asphalt will heal. So if there's any small crack happen because of a car going by, if, if you give the asphalt some time to rest, it's going to heal and gain what, what did it lost during the, the loading cycle. So Jacobs in 1995, he tried to understand more or explain more what, what happens during here. So the asphalt binder itself, it, it, uh, it has two main particles, maltines and asphaltines, that, um, uh, that they create the asphalt itself. So maltines has a lower molecular weight compared to the asphaltines. So what happens here, uh, as Jacobs uh, mentioned, is if you give the asphalt some rest period, very short rest period, this will give the chance to the low molecular weight particles to diffuse into the micro cracks and have some partial heat. So the first stage that happens is the, the asphalt, the maltines, which, ha, which is very slow in weight, uh, very low in weight, they go through the micro cracks and heal, partial heat. And he even extended, he said, if you give the asphalt a little bit higher rest period, this will give even the higher molecular weight uh, particles, which is the asphalt means to diffuse in all of the micro cracks <coughs> and have a full heal. So now we have two main, two main um, cases that can happen. It's partial healing or full healing, depending on the amount of rest time that I'm giving the, the asphalt <coughs> uh, pavement section. So the next... Uh, uh, concept that I want to mention, which is related to the uh, endurance limit. Actually, endurance, endurance limit is, is the result for the, uh, that comes from the heat. So again, we borrow most of the concepts from the metals, uh, metal guy. So the structures, they did it. This concept is very old. It's almost 150 years um, done by Waller in 1860. He was doing some uh, testing for metals. And what he, what he saw here that uh, when he applied very low stress on the samples, so the, the strength here, we, we start with a very high strength of the material, and by the time it keeps degrading, but it, it reaches certain 
a certain uh, value that is not going to fail. It just keeps constant and it's not failing anymore. 